Mayako is. Like, he's so proud of how he got blocked by Anti. Me, on the other hand, I'm like... Uh, why get blocked? I'm like a nameless gravestone. Anyway, here we are, going on to game one. Wadi's Rob coming through. And I get so mad when people don't know Wadi has a Rob. Yeah, I didn't actually expect the Rob, though, this time, because I did see uh, that he had done really well against... Um, who was it who was playing earlier again uh, with the... Cloud versus Wadi's Mewtwo? Uh, that was Mav. Yeah, so it, I didn't expect the Rob here because, of course, his Mewtwo, he seems like he knows exactly what to do versus uh, versus Clouds, but maybe he's just, all right, let's do the Rob. He does like to go Rob in this matchup. Uh, typically, if he loses game one, he'll go Mewtwo, but he doesn't often lose game one with this Rob. As we're seeing right now, he has almost a full 100% lead over Zephyr. How many people on Earth do you think are ever going to be able to say that? That's true. Alright. So Zephyr is slowly able to get in there and make up some of the damage. Just throwing out a bunch of options at the ledge for pressure. Um, just firing away those thrusts. None of them, though, none of them end up causing Zephyr to burn his limit. All right. Kind of reaching for up, uh, up smash there. Yeah. Sometimes, I mean, sometimes it's like when you're behind, you start going for those Hail Mary options. Uh, but I think that one was. That one was all right because... Because he was close up to the ledge. Right. The only it, problem was Wadi landed just outside of the up smash range. Right. And also, he didn't get punished hard for it or anything like that. So that was a good Hail Mary as far as Hail Marys go. Right. All right. And Zephyr has regained his footing. Ah, but now he has to burn limit. That was very aggressive, actually. Now I just look at it. He was trying to go for the up B to, uh, to hit Wadi during it. Honestly, in that case, he should have just went for the ledge, considering uh, that risk there. Um, because it's like, sometimes it's just expected that people are going to do things like that at the ledge. People attack you at the ledge. And it's like, fighting games in general, game of rock, paper, scissors. Right. You're going to throw a rock here. You're going to do something here that fits under the category of rock. And I'm going to punish it with paper. Now while he's playing that safe Sony game that we all know and love. Good back air. Ah, Chris. And just throw out a forward smash to make him feel dumb for dropping shield there. Yeah. This isn't too bad for him thus far, but the gyro pressure is really good. What I'm not seeing thus far or anything is... Okay, there we go. I was about to say I haven't seen Zephyr pick up the gyro or anything like that. Um, now, I'm not that good in the Rob matchup, per se, but what I prefer to do with uh, the gyro is to throw that into the air so that it takes a good time for it to fall back down. And that way, Rob doesn't have access to it for a while. Because if I just throw it back at Rob's shield, what happens is it's going to disappear, um, or I'm just not going to get as much of a conversion off of it as Rob would. Unless it's like a very specific setup, like you have it when they're off stage or something like that. I feel like it's usually better to just throw it somewhere off stage that you can play the game that you want to play against Rob versus having to contend with Gyro all the time. Wally keeping that center stage, keeping Zephyr at bay. That's a good jump there. Okay, good stuff. And across the stage, all right. And Zephyr that manages to take it. Barely being enough, despite the shaky start there, able to bring it all the way back, take mm -hmm. game one. Yep. Rage plus limit cross slash. Now this might be where we Bottom see the air. Mewtwo come out, but Wally has a lot of faith in his Rob. Like you, uh, but it is a lot of faith in the Mewtwo as well, though. <laughs> but of course, it's with Mewtwo that he really made a a name for himself, not only in this region but sort of across the country, across the world.
Zephyr's um, changed his controls. This means he's going Little Mac. That's interesting. I'm sure. I think. Oh, maybe he's not. He didn't change Smash Stick. And I'm pretty sure that's his. Yeah, never mind. Never mind. Sorry, everyone. My bad. That's normally what happens. My bad. But now he has the uh, wrong controls, John, hmm. going for him. So. Okay. Not even a John. It's like a handicap, actually. He won game one. <laughs> True. All right. Honestly, in some ways, it must feel like an honor to get the uh, to get the Mewtwo out. Because it's like, all right, I've proven myself against your Rob. So. I don't know. Wadi's, Show me your best character. Wadi's Mewtwo uh, tends to be more of a curse when he pulls that out against people in bracket. I mean, you've seen just so many, like, clips and vines of just zero deaths that this guy does with Mewtwo. And they nice weight there on that teleport. Yeah. I wonder if, uh, if Blade Beam into the stage would have worked there. If I'm not mistaken, that should last for a little bit and also works as a decent edge guarding tool. I think it lasts just about as long as uh, what he was trying to go there for Fair. with the cross slash. All right. Zephyr doing a nice job. He's pushing him off stage. Zephyr is doing really well right now in general. Good Ooh, cross slash. Cross slash that time around. And Mewtwo blasts off very, very lightweight character. Second one is in the but game. But immediately gonna tie the game up there. Yeah, this game is staying pretty even. He's barely missing the uh, command grab there. Oh, I'm just charging. Now. Basically, it's always interesting when you have two characters with a move to charge in neutral because the idea is sometimes, especially with projectile characters like Sheik or something like that, they don't always want the full clip. They don't always want full limit, etc. They really want to be able to act out of it. And so a lot of these characters, they've um, developed their meta around being able to act out of their charge moves. So you'll notice that the good clouds know how to do an up air immediately out of... Uh, out of limit charge. The Mewtwo's will only charge it a little bit because they just want you to come to them. Things like that. Ooh. Very good, but doesn't die there. Limit plus Battlefield coming in clutch. It's so easy for Mewtwo to land up smash. He has so many conversions that lead into it. Oh yeah, 100%. I wonder if uh, if Zephyr had expected that, um, I guess, that no tech there. Oh, oh DBZ. That dash attack's going to get this man in trouble. Ooh. Mm. Why, do you, why is he knowing you can't punish that safely? No. Okay. A little too slow on the draw there. All right. The space back airs are probably going to do him better than... Uh, the dash attacks and other moves like that. Oh, uh, and caught just, him dropping shield. Yep. <laughs> Shows him exactly what he was trying to do just a little bit ago with the uh, limit cross slash. It's like, no, but you're going to drop shield here, and I know it. And gets the kill off of it. Don't worry, everyone. We will be moving to game three here. Wadi clutching it out there. Zephyr taking a moment to think to himself. It's always good, I think, sometimes to take a moment to uh, to breathe and think before a match. Especially when they're that close. Like. Yeah. Because you don't want to just sort of rush back into it um, too soon if you don't feel like you have the proper strategy or anything like that. Um, I know that Armada, for example, he says that when you see him like with his eyes closed sort of thinking there, He's sort of getting himself back into the frame of mind, right? Right. So he's uh, doing a couple of breaths. He's uh, imagining himself winning. Um, and then he just goes and does it. So it's always it's always good to take a break in between matches, even if you don't have a coach or anything like that, just to say, all right, let me calm myself down. Let me do what I need to do. 
or even just a thing. Well, here we are. Game three gonna be on FD via uh, Omega Midgar. One of the legal Omega stages in the new rule set. Weird, but all right. You know, again, it's as I mentioned, it's always interesting when you have two characters with uh, charge moves. But it seems like Zephyr is respecting um, Wadi's Shadow Ball a little bit more than Wadi is expect um, respecting his limit charge. And that makes sense because, to be fair, at the very beginning of the match, it's not like limit wills do too much to you. And for a character like Mewtwo, who has very good speed and air speed himself, he's not necessarily worried about not being able to play footsies with, uh, with Limit Cloud because he's just as fast. He can still do the things he needs to do. Um, so maybe it's a situation like that, and maybe we'll see it turn around later in the game, or maybe... Zephyr is just more afraid of Shadow Ball than Wadi's afraid of Limit, but, you know, we'll see. Oh, he's always so smart to catch people holding shields along on the ledge there with that command grab. Oh, yep, definitely. Confusion is really good. Just very good multi-use tool. Caught him jumping there. Thing is, against V2, you really don't want to jump too much in general because that's exactly what he wants you to do. That's what the Shadow Ball is for. That's what the Down Tilt is for, etc. All right, no limit or... Uh, I was going to say or Battlefield the same, but I have no idea what the uh, what the ceiling height is on Omega Midgard. I'm not sure that there's too much research on that either. I think it's the same. F oh, there's definitely been research done. Uh, that's why there's th such a small list of legal stages for Omegas. Ah, fair. I thought the research was mostly uh, pertaining to the terrain because uh, grass and traction and walls. It was walls. for all of it. Yeah. Alright, fair enough. I'll look that up later, see what that ceiling head is. Alright, catches the two frame for the first time you know, these matches we've been watching. And gonna land with that back there. Yep. The trade favoring Zephyr there. Good not jumping. And that's actually just the mark of a good player in general. You're just gonna sometimes when you get hit a lot or something like that, what you wanna do is you just wanna chill. Because it's like, alright, well you can't get out from it without putting yourself in a riskier situation. Right. So it's like, you don't want to waste your double jump too early. Just tilt, fall. But now Zephyr is getting very far behind. That was a good cross-up back here. very close to uh, up throw kill range, so his options that he can do in neutral are becoming more and more limited as he loses percent. Limit will hopefully help with that, but um, good back here and stuffs that Shadow Ball. And because of Limit, I think he is going to need about 8 to 10 more percent. Or he's going to try to catch it with the up smash. Wadi, you fiend. I'm so scared to make a commitment right now. Being so far behind. Again, almost 100% difference between these two. That's how the set starts, and that's how it's going to end. Unless Zephyr can do something right Good. now, just Catch grabbing him right. out of Shadow Ball. He is with. Oh, he does have one. Never mind. <laughs> All right, doesn't get caught by that. So good on him. Oh, Cloud getting the grab he was looking for. Good. Didn't use his double jump. Good use of confusion from Wadi. Zephyr slowly bringing it back, running up to 63% with all that rage. It Good could be stuff, the stock it's with done. The cross slash, and it will be. Zephyr takes it. Wow. That's some plot armor right there. That's the Midgar pick that won him the game. 